Hey everyone, it's Nick Dezonier coming to you from Mozilla's headquarters here in Mountain View, California. And today I want to tell you a little bit about Interactive Connectivity Establishment, or ICE, one of the many protocols that's used in the WebRTC stack. So ICE is one of the lower layers in the protocol cake from our last video, and it sits just above UDP, and it solves the problem of establishing a connection through a network address translation device such as a home uh, router or a firewall kind of thing. So if you've ever tried to set up a server at home, um, you've probably run into the issue where you need to set up something like port forwarding to get packets that are coming from unknown hosts outside of your network to be forwarded to a very specific machine inside the network um, kind of thing. And ICE basically allows us to set up a connection like this without having to muck around in our router's port forwarding settings. Um, so these network address translation devices um, were kind of a temporary holdover um, to help with the problem of IPv4 uh, address, address space exhaustion. So IPv4 addresses were extremely limited in how many devices that they could support. Um, with Internet of Things and mobile devices, people have so many computing devices that they, uh, there's so many more um, IP addresses that are, that are needed. So network address translation was kind of a temporary holdover. So still using IPv4, but basically um, everyone behind a home router, something like a Linksys WRT54G, um, appears as to everyone outside of the router to appear to have one IP address, even though um, what's going on is the router is kind of dynamically on the fly taking packets that are going out and rewriting the return address on them uh, to be for that specific machine kind of thing. Um, and so port forwarding is just manually setting it where um, packets coming in on a certain port can be specifically sent to a specific IP address and port as well. But it, it caused a lot of issues um, when you're not doing a typical re request response cycle. Um, so ICE is actually kind of an amalgamation of two older protocols um, for, for kind of getting around NATs and that's very, uh, and I'll, I'll link in the in the description some more information on different types of NATs, but it, it's an amalgamation of session traversal utilities for NAT called STUN and traversal using relays around NAT uh, also called TURN. So it, it describes a way of using those two together to kind of get around NATs. Now it's specified, ICE is specified in a way that's supposed to be independent from session description protocol or STP or session initiation protocol or SIP um, but you'll see in a browser stack they're typically using STP and STP is more of like an interchange format. It's not necessarily a protocol set of series of steps you follow. Um, STP is more of an exchange format like XML or JSON. Basically um, we're going to be describing a couple different candidates, basically a set of IP addresses and ports to try and we're going to encode them in STP and send them uh, through a third party to the peer we want to connect to and then they're going to try all, to reach us through all these candidates and once we have a successful connection uh, everyone can get disconnect from this third party and just do peer-to-peer -peer correct uh, uh, directly. So in ICE there's essentially four different types of candidates um, depending on uh, the individual parties like how many NATs they're behind um, there's kind of four different tricks that we can try, right? So four different types of candidates for a connection. Um, and there is a small security feature of short-term credentialing mechanism. It's basically symmetric um, crypto where a shared password is passed through the signaling server. So you want to make sure you're using something like WebSocket Secure as opposed to just uh, plain unencrypted WebSockets to exchange um, your, your SDP, your, your signaling. Uh, protocol and your short-term credentialing mechanisms. So the first trick that we can do is the first type of candidate we can try to gather is called a host candidate. And a host candidate is basically where um, assuming both peers are kind of behind the same router, so on the same local area network, then they can just um, send over their IP address that was probably allocated using dynamic host control protocol, DHCP. Um, or maybe even statically allocated. And so if both peers happen to be behind, behind the same router, they don't even need to go out to the greater internet. Um, they can just kind of find each other by bouncing packets off the, the router, right? Um, but typically that's that's not the case that when you want to call someone, they're also, they also happen to be in close physical proximity to you. So 
Um, the next trick we can try are trying to gather server reflexive candidates. So this step, uh, this is basically using stun. Um, we need a second server basically to tell us what's our IP address. So if you've ever tried to set up your A record um, or your quadruple A record for your your um, your domain name service, your, your DNS, um, the name for your website, you need to know what's your IP address look like uh, to the outside world. And that's essentially what stun really is. is it's more of a way, if you ever go to that website, what's my IP address.com, and it tells you what your IP address appears to it, um, it's more of a codified protocol for you to gather your external IP address. And then, uh, so you have to essentially reach out to a third party server and ask, what's my IP address? And they respond, and they also obscure it so it doesn't get rewritten on the way back in. Um, and then you pass that over through your the other third party, your signaling server, and so people can try and reach you through that way. Um, now, the third type of candidate that we can try and gather depends on a NAT. Um, some NATs will keep track of, have you ever reached out to this um, external IP address before or not? And so when we do server reflexive, the, the method I previously described, um, we kind of reach out to this external stun server and get a message back, and then we tell our peer, and we try to let our peer get in through that specific address and port, but some NATs won't let you do that. When they see a packet coming in from a completely unrecognized host, uh, they might, um, some will either drop the packet on the floor or they might uh, rewrite the IP address where it's coming from. So that third type is called a peer reflexive candidate. Um, those we don't, we don't use as often. That's typically if you're going through a heavier duty firewall. Um, usually just the first two host and server reflexive are good enough. So peer reflexive is the third. And the final one is firewalls that essentially do not allow any connections from the outside network un unless you've first made a request to them. Um, and so the final type of candidate we can try and gather is called a relayed candidate. Is basically, um, and that's essentially using turn, uh, is essentially a dumb proxy server where both people connect to it and it just copies bytes over from these two sockets that it's receiving and sends them back and forth to each other. Um, that can be expensive. Uh, in high overhead, it, essentially it's always on, and you're not you're not doing peer to peer at that point. Um, various WebRTC companies have made measurements and found something like only a small amount of calls will ever need that, um, depending on um, like what people set up and how many NATs and stuff. Um, so it, it's not strictly necessarily, but for the long tail of having uh, really good connectivity, it, it's required. So that's essentially what internet interactive connectivity establishment is is a way a formal ver uh, formal uh, series of steps to follow uh, that describe using stun and turn to gather four different types of candidates um, basically pairs of IP addresses and ports um, for a peer to try and send messages to. If you have further questions check out Mozilla Developer Network for more information. Thanks.